Mass Effect 3 Multiplayer is a game mode which many fans of the franchise have fond memories of. I often get comments on my YouTube videos with people telling me how they miss playing ME3 Multiplayer. The funny thing is, you can actually still play it today and there is a small but active community. In this video, we're going to explore all aspects of the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer experience, diving into the various game modes, playable classes and races, objectives, and of course, the infamous loot boxes. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's dive into Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. So how do you play Mass Effect 3 multiplayer in 2023? First of all, you need to get the original version of Mass Effect 3, not the Legendary Edition remaster. As far as I know, you need to be playing on PC as well. I tried researching whether the servers were still up for console players on Xbox One and PS4, but I didn't find any reliable information. Comment below if you're still playing multiplayer on console today. Mass Effect 3 costs $20 on EA Play, or you can pick up an EA Play membership for $5 a month and get access to a ton of other titles as well, such as Dragon Age Inquisition, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and more. Jesus, this is starting to sound like an ad. From here, you'll just boot up the game, click on multiplayer, and dive into a match. Mass Effect 3 Multiplayer is a co-op PvE experience where a team of up to four players fight against waves of enemies to complete a series of randomly generated objectives. There is no PvP gameplay, so you can likely enjoy this game mode even if you're not the competitive type, and even if you're bad at the game. At the beginning, you'll only have access to human characters, but you'll unlock more class and race options as you complete missions, including some alien races we never had the chance to use in the base game, such as Batarians and Volus. To start out, I chose an existing soldier build from my only other experience with multiplayer back in 2020 while I was trying to boost my war asset score. I was just shy of 4,000 war assets and needed that extra boost to keep Shepard alive at the end of the game. Damn, it's wild to remember that Mass Effect 3's multiplayer could actually have an impact on the ending you would get in the single player story. I don't know if any other games did something like that. As a terminally single player gamer, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it was a way to encourage people to play multiplayer, so it is what it is. You can customize different maps and objectives when searching for a match, but I found the most reliable way to jump into a match was to just set the parameters to any and all. I never had to wait more than a minute or two to get put into a match, even during the middle of a weekday or late at night. The mission structure of multiplayer matches is pretty simple. You're dropped into a map with up to three other players, and you fight through 11 waves of enemies, completing various objectives along the way. The enemy types include Reapers, Cerberus, Geth, and even the Return of the Collectors. Remember those annoying Praetorians and Scions from Mass Effect 2? Well, they're back, baby! There are five different types of objectives chosen at random at three different points in the match. The objectives are Hacking, Retrieval, Escort, Assassination, and Devices. Hacking involves capturing a zone and hacking a computer terminal before the time runs out. Retrieval involves picking up and transporting two packages to a drop zone. Escort involves moving one of those drones to an extraction point while it collects data. Remember that repair drone from the Leviathan DLC? It's basically that. Assassination involves taking out four high-level enemies in succession before the timer runs out. Time is added to the clock with each successful kill. And finally, enabling or disabling four devices on the map scattered at various points. Meanwhile, fighting waves of enemies along the way. If you die in combat, you can use a meta gel pack to revive yourself if you have one, or wait for a teammate to res you. Failing that, you'll be down for the count, only reviving after the wave is complete. Overall, the multiplayer objectives and combat are pretty basic, but if you enjoy Mass Effect 3's combat system, then you'll have fun like I did. I'll show off some raw gameplay later in this video, but first, I want to talk about the leveling system and loot boxes. As you might expect, you'll earn experience points and in-game credits by completing missions with bonuses for good performance. For instance, if you earn a lot of headshot kills, you'll gain an XP bonus, and if your team completes objectives faster, you'll gain extra credits. The leveling system is similar to the base game. 
you gain skill points at each level that you can spend on power upgrades. Max level is 20 though, and you won't be able to max out every skill, so be sure to lean into powers that you use more often. As for your build, there are the same six classes from the base game. Soldier, Infiltrator, Adept, Vanguard, Sentinel, and Engineer. However, there are also a dozen different races that you can play, including ones that you never even had as squad mates like the Volus and Vorcha. But in order to unlock those, you'll need to open loot boxes and get them as a randomized drop. There are a variety of different packs that you can open using either in-game credits earned through gameplay or by swiping your credit card. I know this type of monetization is controversial amongst gamers, but it's probably the only thing that's kept Mass Effect 3 multiplayer alive for over a decade. I doubt Bioware would have kept the servers up for such a long time with such a small player base, it simply wouldn't be profitable. There are over half a dozen different packs ranging in cost from 5,000 credits for the recruit pack to 99,000 for the premium Spectre pack. I opened a few different packs from each tier and was able to unlock the Corian and Salarian races, along with a Matic rifle and a better sniper rifle, among other things. Weapons and characters have four types of rarity, common, uncommon, rare, and ultra rare. I had a difficult time sussing out the drop rates for each rarity type since there doesn't seem to be a publicly available loot table from what I could see. It also doesn't help that the different types of packs have different item possibilities and drop rates. But for Spectre and Premium Spectre, it seems like you have a 7.5% chance of pulling an ultra rare, at least from what I've read. Not the worst odds I've seen in a gacha system, but still. If you want an ultra rare N7 Typhoon or Black Widow sniper rifle, remember that patience is a virtue. To round out this video, let's take a look at some raw gameplay featuring my Corian Infiltrator. And a note to my editor, how about you leave out all the parts where I play badly? Oh wait, I'm editing this video myself. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> So there you have it. Mass Effect 3 multiplayer is still alive today. I had a lot of fun battling it out in these matches, but I still prefer the single player RPG experience, so I'll probably move on to playing other games after posting this video. If you like Mass Effect 3's core combat system and want to play with alien characters, then this is a good way to do so. I definitely recommend checking out Mass Effect 3 multiplayer if you're a fan of this franchise. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.